Hello friends, today's topic is TCP flow control and how it works, what exactly is the need for it and how does TCP use it for its benefit. Actually, just understand the flow control as a concept like uh, we have uh, water flowing, then to control that we use those dams or to deviate its direction, we use stoppers and all those things so that we can control the pace, the speed of that high flowing water. Similarly is the concept with the packet flow. The, when the packets are flowing, uh, we need to ensure that between the sender and the receiver nobody is overwhelmed most of the time it is the receiver if the sender is a fast one that means it is a fast sender in that case and if the receiver is not that good receiver is a slow receiver then in that case that slow receiver is overwhelmed it doesn't have enough resources to process this or match the speed of the sender the speed at which it is sending the data so in those cases when there is a fast sender and a slow receiver we definitely need this flow control Otherwise, in ideal world, when both the parties are good, sender and receiver both match and they are performing very well. In that case, we send data, we get ACK, again we send data, we get ACK. So there is no problem in that. Problem starts when both parties are not meeting each other's expectation. One sender is fast and the receiver is slow. So in that case, we need this concept. Let's see what is inside this and proceed ahead. Now this is the same thing that we have been discussing. See, both parties have a particular buffer. Both the sender and the receiver, they maintain a buffer. When we speak about uh, the buffer from the receiver, that is called a window size. So the receiver's buffer is, an, is called a window size. That means the amount of data that the sender can send in a go without getting an acknowledgement. That is called the window size. So receiver sender can wait till that time as per the window size provided. Now that window size is the available space available in that buffer area from the receiver side. So this is how it is calculated. Now here as you can see this particular portion that you are seeing this entire is the receiver window. In the entire receiver window this one this is the space which is already filled with the data that has still not been processed. That means this data is right now is being processed but this space is not empty. It is filled with data. What is empty is this particular space that you see here starting from here till here. This is called the receiver window. That means the available space in the receiver's buffer. That is called the receiver window or the other name is window size. Window size is nothing but the receiver window size. The space, the available space that you are seeing here, that is called a window size or the receiver window or a windows advertisement. All these names are for the same purpose. So now when this particular data would be processed, right now it is not processed, so that, that's why it is occupying a particular space. Now when this data would be processed, the line that you are seeing right here, it would go to the right hand side and it would be somewhere like this. That means this one is remaining data to be processed, this one is already processed. In that case, we would have a better, a bigger window starting from here till here. So that means more available space to get more data from the center side. So this is how it actually works. My drawing might, might be very bad, but uh, I hope you underst understood the concept. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is a very important thing that we have to discuss. This is called sliding window protocol. Sliding as in that it keeps on moving. It varies. It's, it's, it moves. It actually slides to the left, slides to the right. And this is why it is called a sliding window protocol. And why does it move? Let's just understand that in a bit more detail. Now, this particular window, if you can see here, uh, these things, both the, this window, uh, this one, this is the right edge, this is the left edge. Similarly, you see this window here, this is the left edge and this is the right edge. Now, what we are seeing about the left edge, right edge, see, this particular data that you see here, one, two, these bytes that you see here, these are the bytes which, which are on the left of this left edge. These are the bytes for which uh, they have been sent and the acknowledgement has been received. That means, ACK is with us. Now, once let's say second byte this second is sent what would the ACK say it would say ACK 3 ACK is always plus 1 so second is sent ACK would say now send me 3 so that means this needs to be sent out once this needs to be sent out because these are already out ACK is done once this would be sent out these all data that you see in the middle they have been sent but still uh, due to no processing being done yet from the receiver end they haven't got the acknowledgement so that's why they are in the window that means sent but window acknowledgement sent but the acknowledgement has not been received so they are just waiting in queue now these are the data these ones that you see on the right hand side of the window these are the ones which are not yet sent they are not ready to be sent the reason being uh, they are just waiting for send or uh, for the receiver to acknowledge whatever has already been sent to it once this is acknowledged then there would be the turn of these of this data so why we say why we say this as 
uh, sliding window. Now see, one, two has been sent. That's why they are on the left hand side. Once the third would be sent, this particular window that you are seeing right here, it would go ahead and shift here. So now the next window would start from here and would continue. Now it would not continue till seven. When three has been shifted to the left, that means it would take one more digit from the right. So now the next window would be this one. Now you see this one byte going left, one byte added from the right. So now this is the one. Once this fourth would be processed, where the next window would start? Next window would start from five and would go on till this nine. So this would be the next window. I hope the point is clear here. This is how it moves. It is called a sliding window protocol. As soon as the packets are processed it gets, and they get the ACK, then we move on to the next packets and so on. So this is how it works. Now, just because of that, there is there are few key, few key concepts that comes in mind. Uh, when we say window closes, window closes or window shrinks or window opens, these all concepts are related to the below finger that we say. When the left edge, that means this one, would move to the right hand side as has been shown here. When this moves to the right hand side, that means the window is closing. That means this particular window is going to the right hand side. This window is closed. Now it would start from here. This one is closed. Similarly, if this one, this window, this left right edge goes to this side. Now this right edge goes to this particular side. If it goes to this particular side, then it would get shorter. It would be shorter. Now these are the few important concepts that we need to understand in relation to this TCP flow control. Let's start with them one by one. Now the first one that you see is called a window size. Now what is a window size? Window size is basically, as, as I already discussed, it is the size of the receiver's available buffer. Whatever is available and ready to take more data, that is called a window size. Or we can say windows update or we can say window advertisement or advertise window. This is all uh, the same name for window size. So that means the available buffer space wherein more data can be taken and how much more can be taken that is represented by this window size. Now coming on to the next one, this window scaling. Now why this window scaling and what is this calculated window size? This is a frequent question that is being asked in the interviews that what is the difference between a window size and a calculated window size. Now understand this thing that in the initial implementation of TCP, uh, if you see in the TCP header, you would see that the window field, this field that is named as window, uh, representing window size, that is a 16-bit field. Due to it being 16 field, it can only take 65535 bits there. Uh, that is the maximum. That means from 0 to 65535. So, but the problem is now due to high-end devices, high-end uh, servers, high-end clients, this 65535 bits is very small. Now we need some bigger figures, but the problem is that TCP header, we cannot modify that. So since we cannot, because there is not enough space, 16 bits are already taken and rest of the bits out of those remaining 32 are already allotted to other parameters due to which we cannot even modify it further. So now in that case, what we do is we use this window scaling factor. Now what does, what does scaling factor do is it multiplies uh, the current window size and it increases its size to a very big level which can meet the demands of the high-end devices. It increases in two powers, two to the power, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So it goes like uh, when we multiply it, we can multiply it by 2, 4, 6, 8, this way. So this is how this window scaling factor combines. So now think about it, how it would be important. The maximum that initially is 65535, let's say we multiply it by 2 to the power 4. So that means 2 to the power 4 is 16. So if you multiply 65, 535 into 16, that would be a huge number. So these much would be the bytes that would be sent uh, for those high-end devices which are capable of using this. So that's why this window scaling factor is very important. And now this calculated window size, when we multiply this window scaling factor with the window size, normal window size, we get a calculated window size. Now here comes, here comes the concept of this uh, persist timer. Now what exactly this persist timer is? It is also called Windows Probe. Now see, the logic of this TCP flow control is that uh, the sender should not send data faster than what the receiver can process. So it needs a synchronization. Now let's say there is a stage or uh, a point comes wherein sender has sent a lot of data and the receiver has still not processed it because it's a slow receiver. So in that case, the receiver would send a message saying zero window size. That means don't send me anything. Now I am completely full. So this is a signal that, that asks sender to stop sending. Now the problem is if the sender would 
completely stop any sort of data transmission. In that case, this session would time out. Now, it is a big dilemma. The receiver is said, don't send me anything. And if the sender does that, it is a session timeout. So in order to avoid that timeout and let the session be continued, what the sender would do is, sender would keep on sending very small packets of data at regular intervals. Just to like, hi, hello sort of data. So it would just keep on sending that, hey, are you available now? Are you, do you have a uh, non-zero window size now? Are you able to take some more data? These are the, like, this particular conversation means this. So this is a persistence timer. So it keeps on sending small data at regular intervals and it would keep on doing that till the point where the receiver has now done the processing of its current data and would send a non-zero window size to it. Now once the non-zero window size would be there, it would start sending the data, all sorted, all good. Again, if the receiver goes full, then it would again provide zero window size. Again, that same thing would happen and persistence timer would start. So you got the point, right? This persistence timer or the window probes, it is a means of uh, checking uh, if the receiver is again available to take the data or not. Now the next thing is that we see here, that is called window advertisement or window update. This is somewhat related to this part, the persistence timer that we discussed. Now when we are discussing about this TCP flow control, now uh, sender would send the data, but there has to be a way through which sender would understand uh, when to stop or how much to send or how large a window to use so that uh, it can be sent to the receiver, it can process or how much it is capable of handling. So there has to be a way. That way is called window advertisement or window update. Uh, this is the same window update that is used uh, to invoke this persist timer. That means when the zero window would come in the windows update or the window advertisement, then the persist timer would start. So that means this window update is a method to tell the center how much or how large a window to use so that now you can send the data to me and I would be able to handle it. Without this, there would be no use of this flow control. This particular window update is sent in the same packet, same ACK packet that is sent. So you see that zero windows or a non-zero window size or both the things that you see there, you would always see in the same ACK packet. That means one packet, both the things. ACK is also there and this window update information is also there. On the basis of that, the sender would decide how much to send further. Or should I hold? Should I invoke the persist timer? Or what should I do? The decision is based on the Windows update values. Now the next concept here is TCP slow start. Now this is also very important. How does slow start work? As the name suggests, slowly start. That means, uh, let's say, uh, there are two instances. Uh, let's say, uh, both the sender and the receiver are in the same network, same LAN. In those cases, it is fine. They don't have any router in between or they are not part of different networks. They, the sender can send multiple data, a uh, huge amount of data without uh, getting the ACK back. It can wait for that. So once the receiver would process, it would send the ACK back that, okay, I've got this data. It is fine for the same network or the same LAN. But what if uh, it is on a different network? There are multiple routers in between and different capability routers. Some might be modern routers, some might be old routers, some might have space issues, some might have other limitations. Now, what about those conditions? In those conditions, it is not just about the sender and the receiver. These routers also play an important part. Let's say your sender and receiver both are very capable, but these routers, they have a very small MTU size. They can't handle that much. They just have, let's say, 1300, 1200 MTU, very small one. So obviously, if uh, it would try to send much data, the sender would try to send the data at a larger speed, at a higher speed. Uh, these smaller routers would run out of space very soon. They would not be able to cope up with the pressure. So in that case, this particular thing, TCP slow start, saves this flow control. Now, how does it save? It would not send a huge amount of data in one go. It would keep on increasing it one by one. Remember, that is in the case of a different networks. In the, in the same network, it doesn't matter. They can they know it very easily and can quickly adapt to it. But in the case of different networks, where there is there are multiple routers are involved, multiple hops are there, this really helps. Now, when we discuss about this slow start, we also discuss about the congestion window, which is created on the sender side. Like we have receiver window on the receiver side, we have congestion window on the sender side. This takes care of this intermediate routers and other devices which are in between, on which this communication is also dependent apart from the receiver. Now, what the sender would do is, sender would keep on sending, let's say, one segment, get wait for the ACK, then if the ACK is delivered timely, next time it would send two segments, wait for the ACK, if the ACK is delivered timely, next time it would again double it, it would send four segments, then eight segments, then 16 segments. 
this way it would keep on increasing by doing this it would ensure that yes uh, this network is capable of sending data at a higher speed now there would be a point wherein uh, there would be limitations of the underlying routers and the ACK would not be received timely in those cases there it would again modify the behavior it would again modify how much to send it might increase or decrease based on the situation so this is called congestion window or congestion control it takes care of all these factors and can adapt itself automatically it can variable it can vary its condition as per the network situation so that the goal of this is congestion window is to avoid any congestion in the network let's say multiple packets are sent and the intermediate devices are not even capable of handling those traffic obviously they would be dropped there would be retransmission unnecessary transmission duplicate packets and multiple different things would be there which is called which was which would cause the congestion and we don't want that congestion to happen we just want a smooth uh, traffic smooth traffic flow smooth packet flow actually and uh, this is taken care by the congestion window now there are a few important terms other than this this is called retransmission timeout now this particular concept that says retransmission timeout why it is so important now let's say a packet is sent and the expected behavior is x should be received in some time now what is that some time that some time is the retransmission timeout in that particular time if the ack is not received to the sender the sender would understand that the packet is lost and it needs to be resent that means retransmitted that is the retransmission timeout rto so that means after this particular time the sender would assume the packet is lost and it would retransmit it now this RTO value is very important in determining the performance and the reliability of the network. Now, how it is so important? Let's see. Uh, this RTO value, retransmission timeout value, is set too low. That means the value is very low. In those cases, if retransmission timeout value is low, that means the retransmission would happen very quickly. That means unnecessary retransmissions would happen. If we could have maintained a proper RTO value, those unwanted retransmissions could have been stopped. So that is a wastage of network resources. Now let's say we set it high. This we set this RTO value is high. Now what would happen is retransmission timeout would happen after a very very long time. So in those cases, it would be a delay due to this higher RTO value. The network would be idle. The throughput would be very less. And the performance would be very low. So that's why we need to find a sweet spot. We need to find a proper balance when to and how to how much to keep this RTO value to. Moving on to the next point, this is round trip time. Now, what is round trip time? Let's say you are reaching from one point, going to the other one, and then you are coming back here, the same, A. Now, this particular, from going from here and coming back till here, that is called an RTT, round trip time. That means, what does it include of? A packet is sent, that packet is processed by the receiver, receiver sends an acknowledgement back, and the acknowledgement is processed by the sender. So this all combined is one round trip time, RTT. So an average is taken to determine the overall round trip time that is called SRTT, smooth round trip time. So that's, that is called an average of it. Okay, so friends, uh, these were the concepts for uh, today in this particular video. Uh, we'll come with further questions uh, in the next part, part two of this uh, TCP flow control. And I would request you please share your feedback on this video in case you like it. Uh, please let me know that you can put a comment there so friends uh, thank you so much for watching i hope this information has been helpful to you and i would try to bring more such videos uh, to provide you the valuable content uh, that you are looking for uh, i would request you to kindly subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so uh, so that you can get notifications about my future videos and the future content in case you have any suggestions for the topics or you want some specific content to be described in detail you can just let me know i will try my best to explain you as much as i can in the next videos so thank you so much for watching uh, you have a great day ahead